Hi there, everybody, and welcome to another episode of The Rad Life. Uh, I have a lady uh, who's my guest today, Lisa Reed, who um, I've known for a little bit, and I think it's very appropriate to have her on right now as we enter in fully into like a phase two of reopening the economy and and looking at uh, where our lives are, we're not kind of hunkered down in that early phases where we're, we're trying to get to some sort of normalcy in our lives. And we're fully in phase two, at least in the state of California, and we're, we're, we're you know, hoping for phase three as soon as possible. But I wanted to just really take a look at sacred cows, ways that we have done things, um, opportunities, you know, sort of skill set development what are things that we should be doing right now if we haven't already started doing them and what are some of the things that we should uh, we should step away from lisa's uh company is productive learning and so let me see if i can get lisa on here um she's been doing it for about seven years and uh, last week was seven years so i also want to hear about her journey lisa hi how are you hi i'm great how are you Good. So you're on some tropical beach somewhere, is that what Yes, you're... I'm in my helicopter. <laughs> <laughs> well, the sound quality is wonderful. I, I, I really appreciate you kind of like knocking out that motor noise. It, it's perfect. <laughs> uh, when, when, uh, before I brought you on, I mentioned that, uh, you know, we're, we're experiencing like a phase two right now, fully, fully, I would say phase two, at least in the state of California, as far as reopening and trying to find some you know, d discover some sort of normalcy in our lives after almost two months of being really thrown for a loop, to say the least. Oh, yeah. And we're hoping that, you know, we get out of phase two and into phase three. And it's really funny. It's like, you know, what is phase three? I don't know. I'll have to look into it. What's, is there a phase four? Is there yeah, no phase four? Phase seven? Where is are we Is there at? phase seven? Where are we? <laughs> <laughs> like, they, 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 did, they didn't tell us that we would be sequestered for this long. They kind of incrementally gave it to us every two weeks. So maybe there are other phases we just don't know about. It's like a computer game. I got to get to the next fa level before I find out there's more levels. Exactly. So, but there's that uncertainty that's going on right now with this. And I don't, you know, kind of interesting for me is that this is the first time, at least in my 53 years of being on this planet, that I have experienced a genuinely global phenomenon. Like not one person is spared. The only people that are spared that are, that are alive right now are people that are maybe too young to even realize this. But everybody from a high school, uh, you know, uh, graduating class to people like my, my, I got a nephew that's going from middle school to, you know, on. And it's like th there's a total disruption to norm what they've been told was normal, what they were told was expected, right? Or they could expect and build kind of confidence is going to be, I want to go to sleep and tomorrow is going to still be the same. So all of that is gone. And understandably, a lot of people, even for information that's out there, are confused what to believe, what to trust, yeah. you know, uh, fear is a factor. You and I talked a little bit about that before, before, um, you know, what are you, what are you, first of all, for those who don't know about you, please take a minute and, and give people a little background. And by the way, I did say congratulations on seven years of being here. Oh, yes. Thank you. Yes. Um, <coughs> so I'm Lisa Reed. I'm a speaker and trainer for Productive Learning. We just celebrated our 28th year in business. And I have been with the company for seven years. I just celebrated my seven year anniversary, which is uh, really exciting. And what, what we do at Productive Learning, we are a collective of people who believe in facilitated self-inquiry, where there's, a, there's such power in learning how to inquire within, like looking for the answers within, understanding our system, understanding what beliefs we've created in our past and how they show up in the present and do they match what we want in the future. And really kind of, you know, understanding that, excavating that, seeing does this work for me anymore and creating a consciousness. And facilitated, meaning uh, we usually help people through workshop setting where we have a facilitator who helps to mirror back and ask questions to deepen right. a person's self-inquiry. So Lisa, let me ask you something relevant to this, because some people would say, would say, oh yeah, you know, that's, that, that's sort of almost like self-actualization or self-helping or, you know, all this stuff. I know it's different, but in some cases, those are people that are maybe conscious of the fact that they need this. 
In a lot of cases, people are not. People if I've, I, I, are just kind of going on with their life, right? right. So what, what, what do you think... What do you think that is? Like, is is it just people are just too busy? They're just like head down and just push push through. What what causes people not to stop? I don't think I've ever asked this of anybody. Like, what do causes people to not to stop and reevaluate? Because I think it's uh, it's sometimes we don't know. Like, if you've never been exposed to anything as a human being, maybe it just wasn't something that came up in your household, or you never really found an interest that just never fell in your lap. You're like, oh, I've never heard of that. I didn't know you could do that. I didn't know my mind worked that way. It would make sense that you wouldn't maybe ask those questions. It's kind of like, how do you know what you don't know? But there's certainly uh, a lot of people, especially now that we have so much information available to us, each generation gets more and more savvy with, with the information available to them. We can start to go, oh yeah, that is interesting. I you know, uh, it'll, it'll come up in like, sometimes we freak out over something that isn't that big of a deal. And later we go, why was I so upset about that little thing? Like that's, that reaction seemed a little out of balance for what just happened. And that's where that would be an example of, Hmm, well, what, maybe there's something else I'm actually upset about. Maybe there's something else going on. How can I look at this differently and developing those neuro pathways to start opening up a different perspective can lead to a lot uh, you know, more um, happy results in our life and deeper relationships and more satisfaction in what you're actually doing versus kind of the head down, this is what I'm dealt with, this is the world happening to me and I'm just reacting to the world. It's like, ooh, bringing up that responsive uh, skill, responsiveness, mm-hmm. awareness, intentionality, consciousness, that's what we're really talking about and so do, exercising that. Do you, do you think, I mean, I've been, I've been saying this about the coronavirus thing. Again, we mm-hmm. said it, you know, it's a global phenomenon. Nobody's yeah. really spared, right? I, I've been saying to people that it actually also is a gift of two types. It, has give, it gave us the gift of time mm-hmm. and the gift of self-reflection. If choose we choose, sh- should we choose to actually accept those I'll, gifts? I'll add a third gift to there. Okay, go I ahead. Think innovation. And well, we were talking about that before, right? Right, like, right. Yeah. But I mean, I think, I, I think with, because it's, it's interesting. You're right. It, it, some people, it's almost like therapy too, right? Like some people, they, you may have not been in an environment where, uh, you know, or, or, you know, where therapy maybe was stigmatized or maybe, you know, the benefits of, of going and ha- talking to a third party, and to sort of have it, you know, like the, almost that 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 uh, objective bouncing board was not really something that was instilled in you, and then you know you might find out later that it is actually helpful, and and it becomes more of a more of an empowerment tool to actually seek that kind of advice than than uh, you know something to be ashamed of, ashamed of having the need to like you you, re, you understand that your vulnerability is not necessarily a weakness, you know, et cetera, et cetera. So I, I, I totally can see that. Absolutely. The, the thing with, with this is I think a lot of us are re-examining right now. A lot mm-hmm. of us are questioning. A lot of us are, you know, whether it's fear-based, whether originally, and you and I talked about this, you know, may have, a, may have started off or reacting to this uh, pandemic as a, you know, m- bit more of a bunker mentality which I think is understandable to a certain degree, even at the, especially at the beginning. But then some people have grown past that, either out of necessity or maybe a recognizing opportunity into more of a growth mindset. Mm-hmm. So yeah. talk, can we talk about that a little bit? Like, sure. what are you seeing out there? Yeah. Well, here's a great example. I saw this um, post from a friend and you know, a lot of time, and actually this occurred for, for my daughter is she's 17. So she had a birthday during shelter in place. And so the kids did the drive by where they drove by and wished her happy birthday and hog the horns and had balloons and things like that. So that's now a new thing, right? This drive by right. birthday party. And in, in, in another city, I'm not sure where it was, it's somewhere in Southern California, this uh, boy, uh, teenager started, uh, he's a drummer. And so he started being hired as a drummer and kind of like master ceremonies for these drive-by birthday parties. And he (laughs) rides on his like those um, kind of uh, hoverboard type skateboard things while he's drumming. And he kind of like leads the drive-by birthday party and it's amazing. (laughs) Right. So he has this whole thing. And I'm like, that would have never been a business. Like he's, it's the perfect example of like, okay, here's an opportunity. What can I do? What skills do I have? What's pers- needed? And it's, just- a, 
Go it's for a, it. It's a personalized parade on demand. Basically. Yeah, yeah, it is pretty much. And so <laughs> I thought that was a great example of being able to adapt quickly. Like, I don't know if he has a website, a business card or whatever, you know, he just saw a need and he said, I'm going to, I'm going to go for it. You, you know, I, I had somebody I interviewed just before Easter. They were in the events business and their business was basically, I think they said Easter and Christmas. I, I'm pretty sure. Maybe it may have been Thanksgiving too yeah. or, or, or Halloween. Excuse me. And so they basically, their business was, they, um, they were hired to do staging basically at malls for Easter, egg hunts and et cetera, whatever. And then this thing happens and their business yeah. just went down the toilet. So they, so young family, um, got a couple of kids and they basically went from panic one after evening to coming up with an idea. Yeah, they already had the staging of the Easter, you know, with the bunny and the suit mm -hmm. and all that nine yards. So they started a picture. I think it was, I think it was called picture me bunny.com or something like that. It basically you send them a picture with a white background and they photoshopped you in with a bunny and Perfect. basically they set that up and they had more orders than they could deal with in a, that period of time. And, and the thing about it is that now is they could do that for mother's day. They could do that for all kinds yeah. of different things. So that's another revenue uh, layer to their business, their physical business. Should we go back to the point where they basically are doing that? Uh, if there's even malls around you know, at that mm -hmm. point, but, it, I, th I found it very fascinating. Like here was ingenuity out of necessity, you know, yes. opportunity out of crisis. Um, yeah. At productive learning, like we, for 28 years, we've been doing live in-person workshops, right? Like, and that's something that we hold very dearly and we see massive results from that. We see connection and um, just get so much positive feedback. So in December we had talked about, okay, we want to create like a virtual workshop or a, some, some type of virtual model in not replacing everything but just like a let's no, enter uh, in another uh, another option yeah yeah and so we were working on that you know at our pace that we you know no no rush um but it was in the works and then this hit and we just the pedal went to the metal and we were able to uh when was it was it um the end of march or kind of like the the third week of march we launched our very first virtual workshop and we were able to, we have, we have half our clients are in Northern California and half are in Southern California. And we usually, you know, rent a hotel or have it at our own facility right. or whatever. There's all these things that we need to do in person. And instead we were able to take both groups and, and offer it to both because we're online and now they get to interact and meet each other and, and grow and learn from each other. Right. Um, we're able to have people from out of state that we just didn't have that capacity unless someone flew in and, and those kind of things. So it's been really phenomenal to watch. We're just like, we're kind of half at the halfway point right now, but doing videos and getting stuff up on, on software that we didn't ever use before. It's, it's really amazing when you actually just put one foot in front of the other, mm -hmm. what is possible. Isn't it amazing also? I mean, I've, I have, I have been um, blown away by the speed by which people can pivot. Yes. Because because it took next like no time at all, no time at all. I mean, even even in terms of just call it response mode versus like maybe strategic mode, right? Or yeah. uh, we 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 as a as a globe responded so fast it was crazy. I mean, other than you know, like it was one of the things I was saying on where everybody was basically distracted by the hoarding of toilet papers and paper towels. Right. All the webcams flew off the shelves of every yeah. staple in town. There was like, you can't get a webcam, <laughs> right? So, I mean, exactly. you know, with, within a week, like, all, you know, all this. be ahead of the trend. You have it to be like, really ahead. <laughs> boom, gone. Like, like that. I was like, I can't even get myself another webcam. So, um, and you still can't, like, even today, like, if you can find one on, like, eBay, it's like three times the price and it's used or oh, something. I mean, it's like, it's, it's, it's amazing. So the and you know face masks is another one and all this stuff i mean i remember there was I, there was a moment there about two weeks three weeks ago where i was trying to broker people put people together and they're you know they're talking about like a minimum of two million dollars for face mask orders wow. and, and, and it was just like insanity mm -hmm. um so with that all being said some people i think it's it's a muscle i mean i think what you were saying is it, it it's something that you have to exercise something you have to cultivate right Yes. And you guys help people do that and have been mm -hmm. for a while. Um, 
I want to get back to the virtual situation because I have a couple of questions for you, but mm -hmm. I want to ask the bigger question, which is some people are maybe more prone to, um, to think that way or to pivot that way quicker. Like mm -hmm. maybe it's, you could, you could say maybe it's part of their DNA. Maybe it's part of their upbringing. Um, maybe they've had a hard, hard life at certain points in their life. And it basically has now serving them well in sort of that, instantaneous triage i'm in that mode mm -hmm. uh, i was talking to somebody earlier uh, today and talked about how you know if you're of a certain age you've experienced downturns before so this is one more of something you've experienced before it may be harder because you're older but you know you know you've survived this you can maybe be more uh able to adjust because it's not a new thing but you know some people may have been in business for 10 years they may have never experienced this before you know, mm -hmm. 2008 was 12 years ago. Like right. that's a decade away from the last time we had a major situation. Um, what do you think, or what would you suggest and advice to people that may be having a difficulty getting to that space? Uh, what to say some of the things they need to do before they can get to the point of so overwhelmed that they self paralyze basically. Yeah, well, usually, you know, with our primal responses, our, our fear signatures, our, you know, fight or flight are what we normally hear of, but we also have faint or freeze. And so depending on uh, what you're in, um, being aware of how you respond in those kind of situations is helpful. And then how do you actually uh, melt those fears away in the moment is, an, is a whole nother process because they, you know, you can change, you can, you can be both, you can be all for it. You know, in, in so it's, so it's, so it's something you can learn to do. Like you, mm -hmm. you, you you're right. Now yeah. I've I've heard of, of fear and flight, but what is mm -hmm. what is faint or uh, uh, freeze would just be like I yeah. don't know what to do. Like kind of you said, like I'm just stuck. I'm frozen. I don't know. I don't know what to. You know that kind of a, a okay freezing. If you can actually imagine someone freezing, um, faint would just be like oh, I just don't know. Like I can't think. The old, of the old, the old know, fainting like, couch. Yeah, yeah. Kind of like I just. I can't. Um, and just knowing those things, but uh, yes, there's ways to, to move through those. It's really about your own emotional management, your own emotional awareness. How resilient are you? You had mentioned there's people who, you know, do really well in these kind of situations. That's probably because they've had, like, whether it was 12 years ago during the economic downturn or prior to that, they were used to living in an environment where they had to adapt quickly, chaos maybe was more common, and you had to, you know, be a scrapper and a hustler yeah. and figure yeah. it out, you know, yeah. where other people, maybe they had more a stable, quiet, not a lot of changes, more consistency. And so when they're, what we call it, our cheese gets moved, you know, like who moved my cheese? It's like, wait, what? I, the, and it can throw them off. Everybody's different. And so I don't, I don't categorize like by, you know, necessarily group it's more it's such an individual thing to know your own um triggers and what could where are you coming from like are you coming from fear or are you coming from faith or like where where are you coming from in the situation and being able to catch that for yourself is the skill to develop like a lot of people don't really have a language for their own feelings like you could say well how are you feeling i feel good well that's not really a feeling like what's underneath that like if you're it's not, it's not really something. it's not really descriptive it's it's more yeah. of a label right? yeah it's not really a, an emotion so knowing your own emotional habits and then which ones do you want to utilize so instead of you're letting your emotions run you of which mm -hmm. they do they fuel our action what emotions help you get to where you want to go what emotions will get you there faster how can you actually what we, we call them, um, we have a workshop called harnessing your motivation. Like how do you harness your anger to get you to the next place? How, do, for me, it's my anxiety. Like how do I harness my anxiety to uh, check like, oh, I should check this. I should double check to make sure I did this thing. Instead of worrying about it, like, let me use it as a reminder. So, well, I think, I think, I think again, like what we're both saying is that this is something that it, it, it has to start with you owning your own, sense of yeah. space your own mindset your whole your own headspace and actually allowing yourself the idea that you may not have it all together and you may 
they can get it to be better to be, better serve you individually. And again, it's like you said, it's it's not a one size fits all. I mean, I think it's as unique and individual as everybody else. So what? Let me let me just step back. You've been at this thing for you've been at productive learning for seven years, right? So what made you go down this path? Is it something that you were doing before, you know, as far as helping people kind of develop the uh, skills or, or, or develop uh, personal uh, capabilities or identify even some of the blockages that they may have, or is it something that you were doing something completely different and then went into this and how has it been over the last seven years? Um, great questions. And there's a lot of answers in, in all those questions. Uh, I will say that I was raised in a family with my dad was a hypnotherapist. Uh, So I was privy to many conversations around the dinner table and just in my own childhood and life that were very positive in terms of understanding that your thinking is very powerful and that you have uh, more uh, capability over your own world than one might realize. Yeah. So, so that was just my childhood foundation and teenage foundation. And then in college, I studied speech communication. I got my bachelor's and master's in that. So I knew that I was really interested in like the human dynamic and people talking to each other and human behavior. I took a lot of sociology classes and right. minored in counseling. So there was all this like, there was all this interest in, in human, human interaction. Um, most of my career was in higher education um, business ownership, things like that over the years. And around my late thirties is when I took my first workshop at productive learning at the time I was the director of admissions at a university. Mm-hmm. And so in a different, in a different field, but managing people and sales. Right. And, like and then um, I, I started, I took it, uh, a friend of mine recommended it. Someone who I work with now, uh, who I still work with. Um, he recommended this workshop and it was, I would do a lot of self-study. I was always fascinated with, you know, reading books and, you know, taking workshops here and there. But, uh, you know, I've gone to therapy, things like that. I just found that interesting. I always wanting to, you know, reach my potential. Um, but this workshop really was, hit me from a different direction. It was like, oh, this is showing me things that I've been hiding from myself. Wow. Like you can't get that from reading a book because you're always hiding, you know, you've got your blind spots, right? So that's when that, 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 that brutal self inventory is a killer, right? Yes. You, you, <laughs> you, you have to really be gutsy enough to look you at yourself in the mirror beyond the glass. Rug, yeah, pull oh, that rug oh, oh, over. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, I, that, I, I, yeah. Tell, I tell people it's not, it's not, uh, I'm not taking it lightly when I, when I, when I sort of suggest that people go there, but th- it, it's like, it's like if I had to visualize awareness, like when you get that first, you know, full on whoosh of awareness, you know, it's like somebody turns on a light yes. and then you look around and you're really warmed by that light and you feel good about that light. And it's, you know, you've all of a sudden like you're owning this space around you in a different manner. And then over time, you realize, oh, my God, this is like a full-time job being this aware. Like, <laughs> like, like can I get some ignorance is bliss, please? And you start yeah. looking around for that switch that got turned on. Yeah. And somebody yeah. had plastered over it and you can't find it. Like, it's, yeah. it, you know, so, it, but, but it, requires, it requires you to take that original, that initial step of genuinely looking at yourself. So, like you're saying, you, know, you took your first class, and you're like, oh, Mm-hmm. It's all this stuff that I've been hiding from mm-hmm. myself. Mm-hmm. So what was that? What was powerful. that like? What was that like for you? Uh, it all clicked, and it, it all clicked when I realized kind of some of the core stuff that I had. Uh, you know, we people talk about like limiting beliefs and things like that. We all have beliefs that we create. We have sure. more than one, but knowing your own and where it came from is where then you can start to have the right conversation with yourself as you're as you're approached with anything, something COVID-19 and all the things that we're dealing with, you're like, oh, uh, I know that this triggers my insecurity because I tend to go there when I feel, you know, when things change and I feel uncertain. So I'm noticing these feelings and I'm noticing that when I do this, then I go and I kind of want to attack or I want to shelter or I want to whatever, like whatever your normal things are, you want to know that. So then you go, okay, (sighs) like, let me just look around here ground is solid under this is stuff that i would do you know the ground is solid under my feet i'm here i'm safe i have a roof i have food i have people who love you know whatever whatever it is that you need to do to calm yourself down but 
being able to have that right conversation with yourself is key. It's not a one size fits all. So that's where it starts to get really powerful. And you're right. It's so courageous to me to look at, this is a not, those feelings, those experiences and those beliefs that we have, that's not stuff we're posting on Facebook, right? right. This isn't like the stuff we want to air. No, no, it's not, it's not, it's not the highlight. Yeah, it's the stuff we've been hiding <laughs> from or avoiding right. or covering over or whatever. And it can hurt sometimes, but it's not as painful as not dealing with it for decades, which is what a lot of people do. So I always say like, let's just get in there, get the splinter out, <laughs> like, okay, are you willing to feel uncomfortable for a couple of minutes? If, you know, okay, so you might cry. Maybe you won't. I don't know. We don't know what it's going to be like, but let's look. Let's. Well, and it may not, it may not, investigate. Go, it, it may not go away either. It's about, like no, you said, no, it's, no, identi no. it's identifying the triggers. Yeah. It's identifying your reaction patterns to those triggers. And then basically asking yourself if there's an alternative to that, that yeah. now with that knowledge, you are empowered to basically yes. choose. Yes. And if you can do that, then you have a little bit more say so in what your outcomes are versus yeah. you just basically are, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a, uh, it's a causality situation. Yeah. It's, it's like a, a game changer. Yeah, yeah. Like we had a whole uh, year or I took, I took a, um, I participated in this one, but uh, is it called conscious choices where it's like, how conscious are your choices that you're making? Mm -hmm probably not very conscious. Most, most people know it's, we think that we're making conscious choices. We're not, that's okay. But where do you want to see change? How can you bring, just like what you're saying, like how can you bring more intentionality and consciousness to each choice that you make right. that's going to get you closer to where you want to go instead of the excuses that, you know, are keeping you from the thing. Like we could just get really attached to our excuses. Oh, I don't have time. Oh, well, I wish so, I could, so, but I can't. Yeah, you know, that kind of yeah, thing. Yeah, self-justifications, arguing for limitations. Yeah. You know, part of it is baggage that you have accumulated along the way. Part of it is in, is deeper than that. Yeah. But, you know, again, taking that look, I mean, here's here's the thing. You can always take a look and then ignore everything you find. Like, you know, you can sure. you always you have mm -hmm. that ability, but that's usually not what happens. Right. Um, so it's understandable that in mass, we have this thing going on right now where people are uncertain. They yes. don't know what information to trust. They don't, you know, trust themselves even filtering that information correctly. Their decisions are, you know, if they're in a family environment, they have kids, whatever, their decisions are not solely about themselves. It's about other people around them. Um, mm -hmm. You know, do I shelter? Do I not shelter? Do I wear a mask? Do I not wear a mask? You know, I, who do I believe? Who do I believe? At the end of the day, it comes down to me having to process all this stuff. Do I have the skill set to process correctly? I mean, there's a lot of uncertainty out there, right? Yes. yes. So what, what have you guys been experiencing during the last couple of months um, at Productive Learning? Like, are you seeing a shift or a difference in what people are seeking assistance with? Um, I... I can just say I'm really honored uh, to be surrounded with, you know, and, and involved with our clients because we are able to see how they're able to adapt quicker and easier than let's just say most of the, you know, the mass public, right? Where it's like, oh, wow, I noticed that I really got um, triggered by something, you know, mm -hmm. going to the grocery store and somebody wasn't wearing the mask or was wearing the mask, whatever, whatever we get triggered. Yeah, by. I had a reaction to that. <laughs> yeah, I had a reaction to something. And they're able to own that and go like, okay, what's that about? Am I safe? You know, what can I, what's in my hands to control? Mm -hmm. What's out of my hands to control? Where do I have influence? How do I want to go from here? Just like what you were saying, where it's like really like being able to pause it. And this is like microseconds. It's just, it's, it's quick. Like, Ooh, I caught that. Interesting. How do I want to play now? How do I want to move forward? Got it. Okay. I can see why I'm upset. And now I'm going to make a different choice or I'm going to get out of the situation or I'm going to, you know, say right. what I need in the situation. Yeah. And that's, we see that at a, so I'm lucky because I, I'm surrounded by people who are pretty um, good at this stuff. And, and that's a very pleasurable place to be versus people who are like, being mean to people and attacking people right, right. <laughs> for having a different opinion. And that, that's well, they, they, so having a heightened awareness. I mean, yeah. it, I, I find that for me, the, the, um, the, the aim, the goal is to, and this is in all things, not just in terms of crisis, but even, in, you know, when you're, when you experience something, when you're going through something that happens, 
the ultimate is to basically have a have a sense of that you just experienced that as close to the moment of experience as possible because because that's really where right now I'm at like like I'm aware of certain things but then if I am actually conscious of them right after they happen or even better while they're happening yeah then I, I mean that then you are owning your own space then you yes. are now what well, you may still make a bad decision you may but but you're consciously aware yeah. of what's taking place and and some people may you know may may um label that as intuitively or you know serendipity or you know something happened that just you know something's going on here i don't understand what this is those are real feelings those are real connections and awarenesses and uh it, it, it definitely, I think, you, what you're saying is that people that have developed those skill sets prior to this crisis, they're able to navigate better uh, and maybe make some of these decisions that are critical in their lives right this na- right now because they, uh, they have the benefit of that. Yeah, I had, um, for an example, someone um, had shared that they were in, their, due to the COVID-19, they were in a situation where customers were really berating and, and it, it was pretty heightened um, aggressiveness. And so we were able to talk through that and see like, okay, how do you want to handle that? Let's let, we're going to assume it's going to happen again mm-hmm. because it's already happened like last week, two weeks ago, whatever it's, it's, con- so let's assume that's probably going to occur. You're going to get another call that, you know, someone is right. hostile. How do you, knowing who you are, want to show up for that? And how can you safeguard as much as possible the experience you want to have when that is in front of you versus getting sucked into the person's hostility? How can you, and what's cool about that is that you can plan for them. Sometimes we can't plan for things, but if you kind of like, here's my game plan. If someone's going to be yelling at me, I'm going to, but I'm trying to help them here's the experience I really want to have. How, how can I play in that conversation? What, what influence do I have in that conversation when I'm coming from this place versus being reactive and just like, Oh, this person's so mean and whatever. It's like, Oh, it's a whole different game. Well, and that's the, that's the word, right? Because, because the, the ultimate situation here with that, with that sense of self or self-awareness if you develop it and it's, it's an ongoing thing. It's not, I don't think it's something that you do and you go, okay, I just graduated. I think it's an ongoing thing, right? Yes. It's a life, it's a lifestyle. (laughs) I mean, you know, you're, 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 it is, I think that's a very good way of putting it. So yeah, it's, it's a lifestyle and it's a, it's a choice. Like you have to, you have to choose that this is how I want to basically live my life. I want to live my life with awareness. Yeah. Um, I'll be the first to admit that, you know, ignorance is bliss sometimes, but it's, it's also, it's also, <laughs> it's not, right. And, 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 but it's it, living life with awareness is a choice. And if you do that, it's not really about anybody else. It's about how you're living your life, how you're dealing with stuff. And if you, and, and, uh, you know, like empowerment through surrender on some things. You know, um, not being reactive, but being aware what triggers you is, you is a must if you're going to basically try to control not being reactive. And, sure. you're, and you're right. I mean, this this situation that you're describing, I could, without knowing the details, I, I, I'm sure will reoccur and rehappen. And most businesses out there that are dealing with the public will probably face some form of it or the other in the next few months, at least. Um, and how do you how do you, diff- do you diffuse that situation? How do you maintain your brand integrity in the process, your business uh, you know, position in the market? I mean, those are really how you deal with that situation could have, you know, rippling effect ramifications on your business. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, so it's not just that, oh, you know, it happened down the street on the corner. I mean, it's, it really could. I mean, there, there's some recent examples that happened uh, here in South Orange County, like where, where because of the way that the person responded, the community basically shunned them. I mean, it's like, well, I'm not going, I'm not frequenting your business because of the way that you decided to deal with this thing. And it was, I am sure a, a reaction versus they had a game plan of what, how they were going to deal with it. Right. 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 Yeah. And us jumping to conclusions and not getting the whole story. And uh, what is it? Um, what's that called now where we cancel, cancel people or, you know, the, Oh uh, yeah. We ghost we, people. We ghost yeah, people. We get, we, 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 we block them. We, yeah. we, we eliminate them from our, you know, from our sphere. 
because we have the power, you know? Yeah. And so, so it's like being able to have a conversation of like, let me understand. Yeah. And I don't know what situation you're talking about. So I'm not. Um, oh, it was, it was, it was, it was a brick and mortar where the yeah. person basically, you know, there, there were some guidelines on distancing and so forth. And they decided that, uh, they were going to act like they were overwhelmed by the situation. And so they didn't reinforce them. And of course the rest of the community basically distant, you know, what do they call that thing? Uh, um, distant, distant shaming. They distant shamed them. And, oh, and, wow. and, the, and the distant shaming was genuinely impacting to their bottom line because yeah. people That's said, tough. well, I'm, not, I'm just not going to farm. I'm not going to frequent your business yeah, because you did not support what I perceive to be the way that you should perceive, you should handle public safety. Yeah. And so there's, there's some real, real reactions yeah, to this, definitely. right? And, and definitely. it's a no win because you could, you get shunned from the other side as well. If you, you know, yes. So it's a, it's a real reality that we're living in as business people right now. Yeah. Um, so I, I encourage just, if we can, uh, I think there was this really great, great thing on that where it was, whatever the, whatever the scenarios of that, the opinion of the person is like, be kind, like just, you yeah. know, someone does this, be kind. If someone does that, be kind. Like, and I, I know that there's so many people out there who are doing that. And I so appreciate. And that's just, that, 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 that takes stance. strength. I mean, that's courage, yes. courageous and, and, and strength yeah. in that. Um, you know, the other thing is, is I found people who have shared stories with me about how they've managed situations like that. We're just continuous, consistent education. That's mm -hmm. the other thing that we're suffering from right now is inconsistency of information. Correct. So, you know, if you're, if you stand for something and you're consistent about it and you know yourself, you know, your headspace, you're putting that out there and you can support it and defend it, then people eventually will accept that that's your reality and that they will respect that. And, 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 but you got to, again, kind of own that space and it's tough in, 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 in a, in a volatile you know, situation like we're dealing with where things are changing. I mean, like I said, is it phase two? Is it phase three? Who's the, what phase is it in now? You know, um, so what are, what are some, let's talk about what productive learning has specifically as, 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 mm -hmm. as far as programs and offerings and things that people could basically benefit from. Yourself. Well, I, I definitely want to make sure your listeners get um, access to something that I think will really help during this time. And if they go to productivelearning.com slash gift, they're going to get access to a step-by-step -step goal setting um, format that really helps you to bite size down any goal that you have because just like we were talking earlier we can think oh i have all this that i need to do and it's too much and i'm overwhelmed. It's overwhelming how mm -hmm. do i even start and so there's this really great process of just going step by step by step by step so if if someone out there is listening and they're really like i i definitely need that i i definitely want that that protocol um just grab it and that's at productivelearning.com gift so you can get that and that's at no cost to you. And then if uh, we're also rolling out an, another um, uh, complimentary course that once that's ready, then you'll, you'll get access to that as well, which has got some really powerful models in there for anyone just supporting exactly what we've been talking about. Um, so those are some of the things we're working on behind the scenes. Um, we're currently uh, in the middle of our virtual workshop called Anxiety to Empowerment, which is a workshop we've been leading for many years, but just happened to be... <laughs> Takes on, it, it takes on a different <laughs> meaning, right? It sure does. It sure does. And that's been very powerful. And um, we have another workshop coming up in a couple of weeks called Productive Communication. That's uh, one that we've, we've led for many years as well. And really like understanding the intent behind someone's communication. So we have all different kinds of things that are on ProductiveLearning.com. And, uh, you know, we're, we're seeing how we can bring in virtual support to our current clients and then to anyone new, we're developing a virtual online program so that people can get the work and get the growth that they want right. um, during this time and, and not having to concern themselves with making a decision if they're going to be in with people or not. Cause we know we're in this, um, you know, we're in this kind of halfway space right now. Right yeah. Now. But you, you yeah. know, you know, the, the thing, the thing that I'm reminded of here too is, Sometimes when you, when you seek, uh, well, I guess everybody's different, but like, let's say like generalizations here, if, if people seek assistance and help when they're having difficulty or they've gone through some sort of milestone, like, you know, they're dealing with a divorce, the death of a parent, you know, um, 
whatever, you know, accident, uh, change, change of physical capabilities. I mean, they tend to basically, you know, it's almost like a cliche. It's all these movies where somebody basically, you know, gets into an accident and a car accident and all of a sudden now their life is, they're actually looking at their lives through different filters, blah, blah, blah. We are actually in a situation right now where we have that sort of uh, stimulant mm -hmm. because of the uncertainty around us, right? And yet the quickest way to get a sense of control is actually to look into things like this, mm -hmm. developing skill sets of this nature, right? To feel, to feel self-empowered, to basically take on not only what is currently uh, your reality, but what could be uh, your future opportunity or by, by knowing more, right? Yeah. So uh, it's, it's, it's interesting. And again, the, the, uh, the website for anybody who's interested is ProductiveLearning.com. And Lisa, that was really a generous, uh, thank you for sharing that ProductiveLearning.com forward slash gift. Yes. Um, for people, I, I urge you guys to go look into that. Um, what are some of the things that you, a, a, a self-actualized person, oh. okay, with heightened <laughs> I awareness. Know, I don't know if I'm quite there yet, but I'm well, that, that, well, I, 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 I think that is that is the ultimate definition of a self-actualized person is a person who admits that they're not there yet because it's an ongoing process. Yes. So, but but for for somebody that's you know, like, how are you? What are some of the things you personally mm -hmm. have have experienced during this? Um, give us a little insight. Yeah, well, one of the things that I just used the tools that I already had anyway, it's just I've noticed that uh, just like any of the listeners out there, and you probably have these too, I have my certain excuses that will come up. And m one of my favorite ones is I don't have time to do this, or I'm so busy, I don't, you know, I just wish I could, but I can't, you know, kind of thing. And so I noticed that there were some things that I wasn't doing, even though I have more time allotted uh, in my schedule when shelter in place started happening. And I thought, oh my goodness, I'm using the same excuse yet. It's not true. I do have more time. I'm not driving anywhere. So I'm already like, you know, have all the time saved that I would be driving somewhere is, is now allotted to whatever I want to do. So I noticed that um, even within myself, that my own excuses regular, my regular friends, you know, would come up and, and, sh and I, I heard that I thought, oh, well, that is so funny. I had to laugh at myself because I was using the same excuse, although it clearly did not apply. So I just thought, so that would be a tip. I would say like, listen to the excuses you're telling other people and yourself. Cause we don't just say it out loud to someone else. We say it to ourselves. So listen, 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 what are you saying? you know what I mean? Like what? And, and then you're able to dismantle that. Is that true? Like, do I really not have time? And it's like, no, that's not true at all. That's a, that's a, that's a, I would bet you is a pretty common one for people. I mean, I, one of the most fascinating things I've, I have heard from people as far as, you know, realizations is people that are actually questioning why they were running so fast, why they yeah. were moving yeah. so quickly, why their lives was so filled with stuff that obviously was not that essential, yes. you know, and, and there was, there was a, there was an idea, there was a concept that, that came out of a conversation yesterday, which was kind of fascinating, starting to take on a little bit more of a wider application for me, but we, we I was talking to a gentleman and we tapped, touched on the idea of escapism versus essentialism mm -hmm. and how, you know, and when you think about escapism, it really is everything. I mean, you, you, we escape into our work. We escape into our busy, being busy. We escape into taking a vacation. We escape into hobbies. Like we, we have all these escapes and some of them are genuinely bona fide escapes that help us recalibrate and reoperate in reality. And in some cases, those escapes basically just no, I don't. I, I feel comfortable in here. I don't want to really come back out of this right. escape. I'm, I'm, I'm good in this bubble right now. Yeah, it's kind of the functional and the dysfunctional. When does it? When does where's it the, tip where's over? The line? And yeah, and where's the line? Yeah. And that's and that's and I think that's what the kind of the interesting conversation. Like when I said it gets it's getting wider, is where is that sweet spot? Where is that? Yeah. Where is that situation? And and in this particular case, we're talking about, you know, we we were touching on sort of hospitality. And, and, and places that offer that escapism, like spa industry, hotels, you know, destination mm -hmm. travel. And, and, and the fact that now, after about 60 days or so of self, um, I mean, you cannot escape from yourself. You, you, heck, you right. can't escape from the family members <laughs> that are around you. Like you, you, know, like you wish you can, right? Uh, but, but 
I think what's interesting is there may have actually been a mass behavior, like paradigm shift in behavioral pattern for people. And I mm -hmm. think we may come out of this evaluating necessities and priorities, also an over, overused word, but evaluating them differently. Yeah. Like, like what, what, is, what is your level of satisfaction? How do you define it? What is, yeah. what is, what is really the definition of status for you? You know? Yeah, I think that you're right that people will shift around their priorities a little bit and go like, oh, you know what, actually, I, I think more than likely a lot of people will shift where they work, whether it's more at home. How or, they work, exactly. Uh, yeah, how, how they, what, what they think they need to do in terms of productivity, maybe, maybe they're able to get what they need done in less time and have that family time or that self-care time, right. whatever, more easily than they originally thought. It's that's funny, right? Because I mean, that that's so sort of a byproduct of this that's potentially positive. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You, I think there's lots of silver linings, and it's it's healthy to look for the silver linings, especially as we get faced with so many headlines and certainly some troubling news for for a lot of people. Yeah. And we all have had different challenges in different ways with this. Some more traumatic than others, but um, if we can continue to look for the silver linings and continue innovating and being adaptable. I think it was the, they were talking about Darwin. It doesn't say it's the survival of the fittest. It was really the survival of who can adapt the quickest. <laughs> <laughs> and what you were saying earlier is, is like, yeah, you got to like make a move. No more waiting for, to see what's going to happen. We do have a lot of uncertainty, but certainty is a myth anyway. Right. There's no certainty no. at really at all. It's just an illusion. Yeah, it's a, it's 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 a it's a story we it's a story we tell ourselves to feel like we have some sort of control Absolutely. in a situation where we really don't have control. And as you know, as they say, the old cliche goes, you know, the only the only change, only constant is change. It's yeah. very it's very true. And the question is, and 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 it, it's kind of interesting because if you have an entrepreneurial spirit, you kind of know this. You know that you know you're kind of almost not only challenged but excited about the fact that you're going to be challenged. Yeah. Right. And see, and you know, some way, kind of testing your metal in a, in a way, and, and seeing whether you can achieve under changing circumstances. And nothing more boring than consistency, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's finding that line of like where are you functional right. again, but the, the functional dysfunctional. Too much consistency, not enough. Uh, where where does that line? And th and that's a personal definition for everybody. I mean, you know, yeah. like the, it's like it's almost like the level of frisk that you're willing to take, right? It changes Absolutely. over time in life. It changes depending on age. It changes based on, you know, what other responsibilities have. But the, the, the cool thing about this conversation, I think, is we're telling people that it is something that you can achieve. It's not something that you, are, you either have you can learn or it, you yes. don't. You can learn it. And there are places where you can go that um, I would almost say that are, that are, that are ex it's exciting to basically explore the depth of what you are able, your capabilities are, right? Absolutely. And, yeah, one of the one of them is obviously productive learning. Lisa, thank you so much for taking time today to, you, to to share that. I uh, again, um, congratulations and happy anniversary on seven years. Thank you. Thank you Productive very much. learning, and um, I will definitely check out that. For anybody who's uh, who's listening to this again, productivelearning.com. Uh, and you can basically look at productivelearning.com forward slash gift for Lisa's gift. I mean, I feel, I feel kind of, it, I feel it's like it's wrong. It's you're the one celebrating seven year anniversary and you're the one giving gifts out. But, you know. <laughs> well, that makes it really fun. <laughs> so, so there you go, ladies and gentlemen, that's the kind of person Lisa is. So uh, thank you, my friend, for being on with me and uh, you know, keep your head down and keep doing the good work. I will check Absolutely. in with you and we'll see where this goes. Thank you Take so care. much. Bye-bye.